Well, I, I think my reaction would be, uh, you know, one of concern like many people uh, in the province. And uh, listen, I have uh, no doubt that uh, the, the RCMP and the relevant authorities will find him. Uh, I mean, you know, sooner rather than later, I think would be everyone's preference, including the, the, uh, the law, the, uh, uh, the enforcement authorities. But, uh, you know, this is concerning, concerning uh, for the community of James Smith, Weldon, the surrounding communities, it's concerning for me, uh, if not uh, too terribly far away, and I think concerning for all uh, Saskatchewan, uh, Saskatchewan residents. And um, when I uh, uh, talked to uh, a number of community members, well, the Prime Minister, a number of other folks, uh, there's really a couple of priorities uh, in the here and now uh, for us as a province. Uh, the first would be uh, to ensure that we're providing the supports for the victims, uh, the victims' families, uh, and that will that is being provided by the province with uh, victim services being deployed. Uh, mental health supports, uh, partnering with PA Grand Council on uh, providing those through the Saskatchewan Health Authority. Uh, the Provincial Command Centre has been set up to ensure that there's a free flow and immediate flow of information to all of those uh, that are relevant. And, and there's going to be additional supports that are going to be required and I had indicated that uh, to the Prime Minister when we spoke that we'll have to work together with the local community ensuring that those supports are being uh, provided. Um, and secondly, uh, we still do have um, at the time I spoke with the Prime Minister, two folks at large. Now it turns out we have one at large and he needs to be caught. Uh, he needs to be caught and I, I trust that he will be caught by the uh, relevant authorities. And I had uh, asked the, the Prime Minister that if the RCMP should request any additional resources that those uh, be provided uh, sooner rather than later, uh, he agreed. And, and, uh, and, I, and I believe that any resources that have been requested uh, have been provided. So uh, that is uh, you know, where we are today. I trust that the RCMP, the relevant law authorities, uh, will uh, catch this individual uh, sooner rather than later. And then we uh, can focus on uh, the community and focus on healing as a province. I have not, um, but I did indicate to the Prime Minister, should the RCMP make that request, uh, that I trust that it would be uh, provided and provided quickly. And I, I understand that, um, that there are additional police resources that are here from other provinces, other areas of the province, as well as we've provided some of our uh, provincial protective services uh, to, to assist in um, the, the RCMP uh, investigation and the work that is undergoing. And so it's all hands on deck, uh, everybody working uh, collaboratively uh, together, whether it be, uh, you know, all of our uniform folks, uh, first responders, uh, municipal officers, RCMP, um, whoever uh, that might be. And so we're, uh, uh, you know, very proud of the individual efforts and the efforts that our organizations are making. And I, I trust this individual will be caught and that will allow us then to uh, turn as a province to uh, coming together, supporting uh, those families, those victims uh, that remain and ultimately, um, you know, moving forward as a, as a community in our province. So considering that Sandy has been um, arrested before, was in jail, was released, uh, and we are now learning that there have been plenty of people that are still actually on the run from the police as well, what is the province going to be doing about that? Yeah, well, this is indicative of a, you know, something larger that we've been hearing about as a province for a, you know, not just the last number of months, but the last number of uh, years uh, as well. That's why you saw in this most recent provincial budget additional uh, dollars being invested uh, to augment and support the work that the RCMP are doing uh, in our province. For example, the, the West team or the Warrant Enforcement Suppression team was, was brought in uh, for instances just like this. They've had a, you know, a number of successes where they have went out and, and, uh, and, and found folks that are, uh, do have a warrant for their arrest and brought them in. Unfortunately, uh, this is not one of those, those cases, uh, but most certainly, you know, as we move forward, we're going to always be looking at how can we better augment the work that all of our law enforcement officials are doing, whether they be the, the Provincial Protective Service, whether they be the RCMP, or whether they be our municipal, uh, our municipal enforcement arms uh, that are there. I would say, you know, extend your, extend your heart and your, your thoughts to Saskatchewan people, in particular uh, those families that are uh, impacted directly uh, with the loss of a loved one or have a loved one that's in a, uh, a hospital today, uh, you know, fighting through uh, whatever their injuries may be. Trust uh, that the, the law enforcement officials, officials in Saskatchewan are going uh, to find this individual and they are going to ensure that he's held accountable uh, for his actions and have some faith in this, this province and the people of this province province coming together uh, to ensure that we are supporting one another as we move forward. How was it that Miles had for so long? Uh, pardon me, the last part. How is it that he's been able to get Lord for so long? 
Uh, you know, that's, that's a question that would be best poised, I suppose, maybe for the warrant enforcement uh, suppression team or, uh, you know, some of the RCMP. Uh, what we are doing up to and including this last budget, and I'm sure we're going to uh, continue looking at uh, as, a, as a provincial government, is how do we ensure that we are, uh, you know, funding, um, you know, our, our relevant law enforcement agencies as we move forward. The federal government has a role and a partnership in this, and I, I think this may be uh, as we find our way through the, the immediate things that we need to do, one is to find this individual and, and hold them accountable. Two is to support uh, those that are in, in, in hospital or, or in, uh, uh, you know, have experienced loss uh, or are supporting their family members. Um, but there may be a broader conversation as we move forward as to, uh, you know, rural and remote policing uh, in the province to ensure that uh, we are doing the, the very best by the people that we are serving. And, That'll be a broader conversation for us to, to uh, partake with municipal leaders as well as the federal government. Hi, uh, you know, at this point in time, uh, it's just it's it's not a it's not a time for us to talk about you know where we are going. Uh, we have a couple of very immediate things that need to happen here. Uh, one is is as I say, supporting families, supporting the victims. Two is ensuring that our law enforcement officials have all the tools they knew, need uh, to find and to apprehend this guy and then hold him ultimately accountable. Um, and as we move forward, we'll have a you know a broader conversation about how we can uh, ensure that we are you know investing in in the right places that are keeping our community members, our friends, and our families safe, uh, in, regardless of where you live in Saskatchewan. What about First Nations Police Force? Is that any essential service? First Nations which? First Nations Police Force. An essential service? Well, I think there's a, there's a conversation for us to have around uh, not only First Nations policing, but you know, how our, our policing uh, enforcement agencies uh, across the rural and remote areas of the province. Um, listen, here we are today in Big River First Nation. I live not too far down the road, uh, about halfway to James Smith uh, in the community of Shelbrook. There's Prince Albert and, and ultimately James Smith. We all live in the, in the same region. And so, you know, the, the, any broader conversation about how we move forward uh, with, uh, you know, Augmenting the, the law enforcement uh, folks that we already have in place, I think needs to take place with uh, uh, First Nations leadership, with uh, municipal leadership, with the province, and ultimately the federal government at the table. And in fairness, uh, you know, much of that conversation is ongoing. Uh, when we uh, added uh, investment dollars to last year's budget, the, the warrant enforcement suppression team uh, would be an example of that. That was done through what we had heard from uh, community leaders, Indigenous and otherwise, across the province, and that investment was made on their behalf. Um, we've obviously seen some serious health care concerns across the province, and we had previously heard that if there wasn't a medical emergency in the province, the health care system would basically fail. How have you heard anything? Absolutely, we have a challenged healthcare system uh, every day uh, today in Saskatchewan and across Canada, for that uh, for that matter. And when we have a you know a large incident like this, uh, tragic tragic incident, senseless uh, incident uh, like this, most certainly it did create stress in our a number of healthcare facilities in Melfort and Prince Albert and ultimately RUH in, in Saskatoon. And, and you know, so in addition to thanking uh, our law enforcement officials that have and continue to work so very hard in ensuring that, that we apprehend this fellow sooner rather than later, thank you uh, most certainly to our, our healthcare professionals who are doing what they do each and every day and they're doing so in uh, a, a much more challenging environment uh, today and, uh, and this past weekend in particular. And so I, I thank you to each and every one of them. When I sorrow, uh, sorrow, ab absolutely, just absolute sorrow for uh, the family. I talked to a number of, of family members that were impacted directly um, with the loss of a of a family member in what happened uh, this weekend, and and uh, words cannot describe uh, how senseless uh, this act and the pain that is being experienced by um, so many families, uh, not just in the James Smith. Uh, community but families uh, across the province and, and across the nation and, and so to each of those those families uh, please know that uh, this entire province uh, we're, we're with you every step of the way and this provincial government uh, will also be with you to support you uh, in any way that we can. Now I imagine RCP Victim Services is pretty overrun with this file is there any uh, sort of support the provincial government can provide 
an organization like Victim Services at this time? Uh, yes, uh, that's exactly uh, what we are doing is augmenting uh, not only the law enforcement folks' role uh, in this through our prov provincial uh, protective uh, services, uh, but also augmenting uh, our victim services uh, 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 department um, and uh, working, uh, for example, partnering with, uh, uh, for example, the Saskatchewan Health Authority is partnering with PA Grand Council on, you know, how best can we provide uh, mental health supports uh, to those uh, right in the community where uh, this this tragedy has 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 unfolded. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. And welcome to Big River. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time.